Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Cutting Edge, the weekly news programme produced by Sheffield Hallam journalism students exclusively for Sheffield Live. The top stories are on Sheffield today. We're behind the scenes with a search and rescue team after last November's floods. And we look at how Labour suffered a political banana skin in Stocksbridge. Now, we all remember the floods that hit South Yorkshire back in November. They were some of the worst the region has seen in over a decade, with many residents left without homes. WaterSafe UK Search and Rescue were there to help these flooding victims when they were desperately in need. Jay Burfield caught up with them to see what the teams did and what they're doing to hopefully prevent future flooding. Flooding in South Yorkshire early November resulted in five danger to life flood warnings as the River Don burst its banks. This resulted in property damage and the worst affected areas were evacuated, including 350 homes in Fish Lake. Overall, more than a thousand properties were affected in Doncaster, Rotherham and Sheffield. Safe Water UK Search and Rescue, also known as Wuxart, were called out to the affected areas. This included searching properties and evacuating the homes. The Water Safe UK Search and Rescue Team, Wuxart, um, is completely uh, run um, and organised by volunteers. Um, we've been going 10 years, this is our 10th year. Um, there's currently 27 active members that, that we've got. Um, we train twice a month. Um, Training is really important, important for us because we're, we're, always, we're always ready to go. Um, Everything is self-funding here. We, we rely totally on uh, charitable donations. The Wuxart team is completely reliant on donations to do the work they do, including fueling and maintaining vehicles and also buying the essential equipment they need. We rescue 60, 60 plus people, just our unit, our team, um, and assisted in, in, in countless others. Um, whilst we were there, was there for a couple of days predominantly working, working the night shift there. Wuxart continues to keep training to a high standard. Training and funding allow them to respond to emergencies and save lives. However, this does raise the question if there are enough defences put in place to begin with and prevent their resources being strained unnecessarily. The Environment Secretary announced over £60 million was being pledged to help improve flood defences across Yorkshire, Cumbria, the North East and South East of England in September 2015. It is said that effects of the flooding were reduced due to improvements, however certain areas of South Yorkshire were still badly affected. The, the local authorities are working um, desperately to try and improve the flood defences, but I think there's a funding issue there as well, so you know they're not getting the amount of funds needed to, to up, uprate the, the flood defences. So yes, I think they're inadequate purely for you know on the evidence that it's flood, flood. More wet weather is expected in the coming months. It is hoped there won't be a repeat of November 2019. Yeah. Yeah. More needs to be done, but finances are tight in both local services and Wuxart. Next up, after over 80 years of Labour dominance, the north of Sheffield has partially become a Conservative area after the Tories won its first post-war seat in the Steel City in December's election. Yes, the Penniston and Stocksbridge constituency has been vacant since Angela Smith moved to the Lib Dems and it's now gone blue. I went to a wet and windy Stocksbridge to chat to those that voted. It's the talk of the town and no one really saw it coming. The Conservatives have taken the Penniston and Stocksbridge seat off Labour for the first time and this small part of the city now has a Tory MP for the first time since 1935. Miriam Cates won by a sizeable 7,200 majority with over 23,000 votes. More than Angela Smith ever got since this constituency was created back in 2010. And now the former chemistry teacher turned MP, Miss Cates is pretty certain she knows why she was victorious. Well, I mean, I think there'll be much debate in the weeks to come of, you know, the election campaign. But when we were on the doors, there were two things. One was Brexit, um, a feeling of frustration that this area did vote to leave um, and that our politicians just weren't representing that. But also, um, 
a sense of being fed up with being taken for granted for too long, with a lack of ambition from local councillors, from MPs, and a feeling that we've been left behind and just being ready for a change, ready for someone with a vision, someone with a positive attitude. Um, and I think, you know, those two factors combined have got swung into less than that. The area is mostly working class, with over 60% voting to leave the EU. Maybe it's no surprise why the Tories romp to victory, especially when most residents are over 65. Along with both Rother and Don Valleys, it's the first time those on the right have won in South Yorkshire since 1997. It's the only seat in Sheffield that changed hands. Now this area paints the picture for a shambolic election result for Labour, even though candidate Francine Johnson did her best. Now it seems to me, ahead of the election, Labour, they didn't really use their loaf. So my vote was not really a vote for Boris Johnson, it was more a vote against Jeremy Corbyn. I voted for sanity, I voted for truth, I voted for honesty, so I voted Labour. I voted for Boris. You voted Conservative? Yes. Why did you vote Conservative? Because I agreed, I voted for Brexit to start with and then he, he was the only person who was going to get anything done, so that's why I voted Conservative. It's one of the first pieces of the blue puzzle in taking down Labour's red wall. But in the brisk winters of North Sheffield, it's now also their parliamentary seat and not just people's hands that turn from red to blue. Joseph Hadfield for Cutting Edge in Stocksbridge. Let's take a look at some of today's other main news. A new bank is set to open on Sheffield's Fargate. Metro Bank was the first new high street bank to launch in the UK in over 150 years back in 2010 and will create around 25 jobs. Construction is ongoing on Fargate with new features to include safe deposit boxes. Former tenants River Island closed last July and Metro will open its first branch in South Yorkshire in the next few months. Sheffield United are one of the greenest football clubs in the Premier League scoring 7 out of 8 in a sustainability test by the UN-backed Sport Positive Summit. The Blades scored higher than the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool in the research, which looked at the club's waste management and energy efficiency, amongst other things. Sheffield Business School has been granted funding to support 50 micro-businesses. It is part of the Lead to Grow programme and won't cost the businesses any money. The funding has been made available through the government's £9 million Business Basics programme. Now, the National Lottery celebrated its 25th birthday in 2019 and over that quarter century many projects have been funded through good causes and those playing the weekly draws. One such project is the Sheffield Steel Kings, a para ice hockey club that's only been going for five years but is already making a huge impact in the Steel City, benefiting hugely from the National Lottery. Yes, club chairman Jake Oakley joins us now from Ice Sheffield. Jake, thanks for talking to us. Let's start by talking about the club itself. It was only founded in 2014, so it's one of the more recent National Lottery funded projects. Just explain to us the story of when the funding was first awarded to the club. Talk us through the process. So we've uh, had a couple of different uh, funding uh, grants come through from the National Lottery over the last couple of years. Um, most recently uh, was, la uh, well this year actually, that we, uh, that we had one. Um, and before that was probably 2016-ish oh, roughly. Um, Basically, we uh, we used the funding to be able to uh, run a program that we called Learn to Sledge, and uh, the idea behind that was simply that we would uh, get people trying the sport. We basically bought uh, new equipment, new uh, new sledges, new protective body armor, and we publicised the fact that we were out here and we we're basically looking for people to come down, try the sport for themselves, and uh, fall in love with power ice hockey. So, Jake, talk to us a little bit about the team. Um, what's the next target for the team? Well, so the next target for the team, uh, basically, we've uh, we've announced because of our numbers that we're going to grow into two two teams next year. We're actually going to be the first team uh, in British Power Ice Hockey to actually run two teams out of Sheffield. Um, last year was a huge success for the club. Uh, we came away as league and playoff champions. And uh, off the back of our sort of learned sledge programs, things like that, we've just grown and grown and grown. And we're now at that point where actually we can run two teams, one as more of the senior team and one as more of a development team, but the fact of the matter is we are growing the sport and uh, so the next big step come next season is trying to get that new team um, you know, onto the ice, playing competitively and uh, we're going to try and get our first win with them as well. Now it's fair to say you have a long and successful relationship with the National Lottery. You were named Best National Lottery Funded Sports Project in 2018 for your Learn to Sledge programme. Now has that helped raise awareness of the work you're trying to do? 
Oh, very much so, yes. I, uh, uh, w without it, it would have been much harder to get to the stage that we are. Um, that, that funding has been, has been key to, uh, to the success of Sheffield, really. Uh, we, I mean, we have a great team on and off ice that have worked tirelessly to try and grow the sport, but ultimately, cash is king. And with that money, we've been able to kind of grow uh, this, the club um, and just sort of being able to put people into sledges and things like that and just let them enjoy playing the game, you know, that's, uh, that's been the, the important thing. And because we're such an inclusive club as well, um, you know, it really doesn't matter what the background is. As long as we've got the equipment, we can try and get people playing power ice hockey. And finally, as the National Lottery is now 25 years old, what impact do you think the National Lottery has had, not just on the Steel Kings, but on the city of Sheffield as a whole? I mean, it's, it's huge. The, the National Lottery is, uh, is a godsend for um, clubs and uh, associations like, like the Sheffield Steel Kings. We, um, we personally couldn't sort of be at this stage where we are now without the, sort of the, support, uh, the support and, um, and funding uh, that they've been able to offer us through grants. Uh, so, you know, like ours, there are other projects around Sheffield that will have just benefited greatly from, uh, from having uh, them as, uh, as supporters, basically. Yeah, it's, they're, they're, they're brilliant and uh, uh, long may it continue. Jay Coakley there from the Sheffield Steel Kings. Now, a new bowling alley has got the ball rolling in Sheffield. Lane 7 has made its debut in the region and I went along to find out about it. This bowling alley is the latest entertainment addition to Sheffield. It is situated on Matilda Street, right in the heart of the city. I'm here at the new Lane 7 bowling alley in Sheffield City Centre where they aim to bring a bowling and gaming experience aimed at adults. The bowling alley just off the moor in Sheffield City Centre is set to bring 30 new jobs to the city and I caught up with owner Tim Wilkes to find out more. Me and my friends look for different things to do in the night out. And as we got a bit older, uh, we don't want to do less clubbing and vertical drinking. And uh, stumbled across a business on a holiday in Scandinavia. And I thought, it's really good. And uh, looked around in the UK, and there wasn't really anyone doing this in the UK. So we adopted that to include more gaming, like ping pong pool, mini golf, karaoke, and, uh, and laying some with ball. The difference between this Newcastle-based bowling business and your typical bowling alley is the target audience, as Tim explains. In general, uh, our, our key market is anyone from about 18 to 50, and we just need to be close to uh, restaurants, bars, nightclubs. People are going out for a, a fun night uh, in the city centre. The fact it's just off the moor is probably a bonus rather than something uh, an essential that we're looking for. Uh, obviously a huge amount of football on there. Um, we pre-signed this nearly two years ago. That's how long these projects take from signing to getting planning through acoustics, etc. So um, we pre-signed knowing what was coming to the moor. It's nice to see that that's been delivered in those two years when we signed to actually launching the site. This becomes the first Lane 7 to open its doors in South Yorkshire, following sites across the UK in cities such as Aberdeen, Liverpool and Birmingham. With the focus very much on gaming as well as bowling, guests can play old school games such as Pac-Man and Scalectrics. So if you like retro games or just want to have a laugh with your friends, then this could be the ideal place for your next night on the town. Andrew Gordon for Cutting Edge. I must say that does look pretty good. I might have to try that one out myself. No, it looks good, doesn't it? But uh, make sure you refrain from doing any dodgy dance moves like the bloke we saw in the footage. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Right, now let's turn our attention to sport as the Sheffield Hatters basketball team have lost their star player Kayla Thigpen from the ranks as the shooting guard has left the club. But it's not all bad news as Cameroonian American player Tia Wedgley has joined. The 23-year-old swingman arrives in Sheffield on a transfer from Hirona in the Spanish leagues. Our reporter Will Shreve Peacock is there for us at Gold Sheffield and he can tell us more. Will? Thanks Joe and Andy. I'm here with head coach Vanessa Ellis of the Sheffield Hatters basketball team. How do you feel that the departure of Kayla Thigpen has left the team sort of mid-season? Um, ideally, we don't want to lose any player, um, but um, Kayla went home due to homesickness. But we had a team meeting and um, sort of set our goals and challenges, uh, highlighted what we needed to do to overcome this. And you know, the players have responded really well. Uh, been working hard in training and pulling together as a team when we've been competing. So, you know, it, although it was disappointing, the team came together to, to meet the challenge. 
How do you think the addition of Tia or Leggy to the team will sort of will it improve your performance throughout the year? Or? Yeah, Tia's played in the league um, for another team for two seasons and, and did really well in her style of play. She'll fit into our team really well, and it's always good to uh, add a, another experienced player to a already you know good squad. So hopefully it'll um, just boost boost what we're doing and hopefully help us get some more wins. And finally, what do you think is in store for the team for the rest of the season? Well, as a team, we um, we have ch our goals set. Uh, we want to be as successful as we can. It's a tough league this year, so we have to be at our best in every uh, way to to win. Um, but the players work really hard in training. We work really hard to improve each week, and you know, we've just got to go out there and compete, and hopefully be a bit more consistent to, to get those wins. Lovely. Uh, best of luck for the rest of the season anyway. Hope you do perform well and hope the newbies perform well as well. Uh, thanks that and back to you Joe and Andy in the studio. Will Shreve Peacock there with the Sheffield Hatters. Finally, Into Change have helped educate over 20,000 kids in crime and life in prison. Yes, this non-profit organisation runs a series of crime prevention programmes to encourage young people to make the right choices. Here on the corner of Nick Street in Neeps End is the once dilapidated building of Rutland Hall, which has now been transformed into the home of the charity Interchange, where they aim to encourage young people and ex-offenders to get themselves back on the right track. They provide a range of classes and tuition from experts and ex-offenders to give an insight into criminal life. They have rooms dedicated to real-life scenarios, like this kitchen, where they give you a look into a teenager's life that's family has been affected by involvement with gangs and drugs. What you call an alternative provision service. So young kids who are expelled from school typically, who cannot access mainstream ed education, usually because of behavioural issues, um, they're on a timetable here. They focus on the curriculum which is bespoke to their needs, but it's nationally recognised under, under NOCN. The other thing we do is what we call what we call crime of consequences. So myself and other prisoners and ex-offenders will deliver interventions for young people. Now you need to understand that the interventions are evaluated and the data is collated and reports are produced by University of Sheffield, Hallam University and other institutes of education. They have recently been donated new gym and boxing equipment and hope that this will encourage the young people to focus their mind away from a life of crime and a life that takes them into the gym. When young people start seeing the benefits of training, there's much more to it than just a physical, aesthetic appearance. It's also confidence, self-esteem. A lot of these kids are really, really down in the dumps and what we do is try to pick them up, tell them to believe in themselves. Because if you want to if you want to get somewhere in life, you have to learn to love yourself. And that don't mean in a narcissistic way, it just means start to respect yourself and others then will respect you. A lot of young people they have through the doors at Rutland Hall don't know what it's like to get themselves arrested. So they try deterring them away from a life of crime through the art of role play and try putting them into real life situations. I'm here inside the courtroom at Rutland Hall where they stage fake court scenarios for young people to really understand what it is like to get themselves into this situation and this environment in real life. They have a prosecution, defence, judge and also jury all to add to the real life effect of being in a courtroom and hope that when they leave these four walls they never get themselves into the same situation. They even have a mock prison cell set up where they use real beds and toilets to get it as close to a real cell as possible to show the kids what it's really like to be part of the criminal life as not many people get to see this unless you're behind bars yourself. This is Will Street Peacock for Cutting Edge in Sheffield. And that's as far as we go today. Thanks for watching. Join us next week when a new team of presenters and journalism students bring you Cutting Edge exclusive to Sheffield Live. From Andy, me and all the team here, take care, enjoy the rest of your day. It's bye for now. Thank you.